Hello and welcome. Today I want to tell you how you can capture lightning with your DSLR or any other camera as well as how I post process my lightning photos and turn something like this into something like this. Now first off it's actually not difficult at all to capture lightning. It's really easy. All you need is of course the lightning storm and that's the hard part. And you need a camera which you can put into manual exposure so you can get a longer shutter speed. So this picture right here I have took a few months back and actually I shot this from my balcony. Now definitely if you want the nice landscape in your picture you definitely have to go outside. But please only go outside when the lightning storm, the thunderstorm is far away so you can be safe. Otherwise when the lightning storm is right above you, you really shouldn't go outside. No picture in the world is worth getting hit by lightning. So. This picture I've took from the safe balcony with a roof above it, so there really wasn't any danger. Now you want to have a tripod that is very essential since you're going to have to use a longer shutter speed. So to the settings I've used here, ISO 100, f11 and 11 seconds shutter speed. Now this will depend on your lens, your camera and of course the amount of lightning and the strength of lightning and how far the lightning is away from you. So I suggest you to start it off with these settings and maybe change it later if you find that the lightning is too dark or too bright or whatever. So let me explain to you why I chose this setting. 11 seconds exposure time, it's really really vital and important to get the longer shutter speed. It doesn't necessarily have to be 11 seconds, it can be more or less, but basically what you want to do is to set up your camera on a tripod and point it in the rough direction of the lightning storm where you see lightning come down on the ground. And a thing that is very important there is focal length. As you can see I shot this at 53mm on a crop sensor body, uh, the Canon 600D, which is around 80mm in full frame equivalent. So the trick there is you don't want it too wide otherwise you will get a lot of other stuff rather than just lightning in your picture and you also don't want it too narrow because then you're gonna miss big parts of the lightning and your overall picture will just not look as impressive. So if your lightning storm is very close to you I think a focal length of about 50 to 80 millimeters is really really good. Of course if it's far away in the distance you might want to use a bigger focal length. You just want to make sure you don't narrow it down too much otherwise you will just cut off so many parts of the lightning. Alright so you have your camera set up on a tripod, you have your focal length set at around 50 millimeters. Now I've chosen f11 and ISO 100 just to get ISO 100 to get the lowest amount of noise possible and if 11 was just a nice aperture to get a nice lightning exposure because even though you might not believe it you can easily underexpose the lightning so if you stop down your f-stop too high you will get just a you know a very dim lightning picture which really isn't that impressive anymore. So you really want to make sure that you have a nice exposure for your lightning not too bright not too dark. Now in terms of overexposed parts it really doesn't matter that much if some of your lightning is overexposed but you just want to make sure that it's not too much otherwise it will just blow your picture and you will not see your fine lines of the lightning. Now let me tell you it's all a thing of patience and luck of course. So I was very lucky that the lightning storm was around my area for about an hour. So I went on the balcony, set up my camera and just pointed in the rough direction where lightning struck. And then once you have all of that stuff set up, shutter speed and other settings on a tripod, what you want to do is just click away until you get a lucky picture. So I've probably shot around 100, 150 pictures of that lightning storm and only about two or three turned out decent and this one is the best of it. So you just want to have preferably a cable remote and just click, wait until the exposure is finished, 
then click again after 11 seconds, click again, etc. And you just want to wait and with a little bit of luck and with patience you might get a good picture. So it's not hard on the equipment or knowledge or, you know, setting space, it's just uh, hard in terms of having the luck of the lightning striking at the right position at the right time before the lightning storm disappears. So I hope I could give you some tips on how to shoot lightning. Now I want to edit this lightning photo. As you can see there's a construction site on the bottom and I definitely don't want any of that. So what I'm gonna do is just crop that out. And you know, I think a one-to-one -one crop would work quite well here. So I'm just gonna select the one-to-one -one crop here. And the next thing you wanna do, as you can see, I've messed up the white balancing camera, but that's really not uh, anything at all, because I shoot draw. And you really, really should shoot draw. The post-processing abilities just are so much superior to JPEG. So I'm just gonna bring down the color temperature because as you can see it's way too warm. I want to go for this very static night sky look. So almost into the blues. Something like this looks pretty good for now. And then also a thing that you can do with tint is bring the tint more towards the magenta. So you get almost a purple image rather than just blue. And I really like this look, it's kind of more dominant and more impressive, so to say. So if you're in Lightroom after doing that, I would go to the tonal curve and bring up the highlight slider here all the way. So you can see that just exaggerates the very highlights of the picture, so your lightning seems even more electric and alive. Here's before and here's after. And then a thing you probably want to do is just bring down the blacks. Now you can see those blacks really mess up the color, but I'm gonna fix that in a second. Reason I'm bringing down the blacks is just to get more contrast in the overall scene and to make the rest look a bit darker. I really just want the lightning to be very bright. So I'm gonna bring down the blacks quite a lot here. And as you can see, it turned out way too blue. So I'm gonna bring the color slider a little bit more towards the yellows. Then the other sliders really just wanna play around with these and stick with whatever looks best. I might even bring up the whites a little bit so this part of the sky looks a bit brighter in terms of shadows. Might even bring the shadows down even further just so we get even a darker picture and to kind of highlight the lightning even more than the rest. Hmm, maybe bringing down the highlights a little bit and contrast, even gonna bring up the contrast even more. And I feel like the picture already looks pretty cool, but I think we can make it better by adding some clarity. This will just, you know, show these little lines in the lightning a bit more, make it a bit more prominent and I really like that. Now, vibrance and saturation, obviously we already have enough here, so I'm not gonna do anything there. Tonal curve tool, the other sliders besides the highlight slider on the tonal curve is probably something you wanna play around with as well, just to kind of fine tune the look a little bit. Maybe even bring down the darks and the shadows itself. Maybe even bring them well, actually a little bit up. Then HSL tool, here you could fine tune your tonal ranges, but I'm just not gonna do that for the picture to keep it kind of shorter. Split toning, really wouldn't add any split toning in this kind of picture. But a thing that is really cool is the detail tool, and you're probably going to have some noise after editing your picture as much as we did here. So a little bit of noise reduction can help, just to make everything look very smooth, especially the sky. So that's definitely a thing you want to do, especially if you're going to display your picture on a big screen, or if you want to print your picture. Now as you can see we have a lot of purple fringing from the lightning, from the heavy editing that we've done and I actually really don't mind that, I think it looks pretty cool actually. 
but just in case you wanna see how it looks without, well you're not gonna be able to get rid of that amount of purple fringing, but at least cut it down a little bit. If you wanna do that, just go to Lens Corrections, Color, remove chromatic aberrations, and then go to the amount of the fringing in the purple and bring that up quite a bit. Now as you can see, you really don't want to make this too much, otherwise it completely messes up the picture. But a little bit of plus can, you know, bring down the purple look, the purple fringing a little bit. Now, I really don't mind, again, this purple fringing, so I'm just gonna um, uncheck this little chromatic aberration removing option. And let me see if I want to add anything else. I feel like the last thing that I might do is add some vignetting, just to give a bit more attention towards the center. You definitely want to make sure that you don't overdo that, otherwise you end up with a picture like this. But a little bit can help sometimes, really up to you. Definitely nothing you have to do here. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we really have a really cool picture here, especially compared to the raw file. And keep in mind that I've done all of these adjustments quite quick here for the video. If you really would spend a lot of time editing everything super in detail to get just right as you wanted, you were probably gonna end up with an even better looking picture. So I really hope I could give you some advice and some tips on how you can shoot lightning and edit lightning photos. If I did, please give me a thumbs up, that really helps me out a ton and makes me very very happy. And if the video did not help you out, please give me a thumbs down, that really helps to improve my content in the future. And of course, please be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one, landscape photo edits in Lightroom, other photography tutorials, etc. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you can get some awesome lightning pictures, and of course, take care.